So let's go ahead and start over here. I'm finding keeping myself on camera to be pretty distracting. Uh, earthquakes didn't help either. So let's go ahead and talk about something that lies behind costs. And that's the idea of the production function. And the idea of the production function is we're going to get a relationship between inputs, the things we use to produce, and output. And typically, our first step is we're going to think about throwing inputs into one of two categories here. We have our fixed inputs, which can't be adjusted in the short run. Not to say they can't be adjusted ever, but they can't be adjusted in the short run. And our variable inputs, which can be adjusted in the short run. And I'm going to be lazy from here on out and talk about SR as short run. And then fixed inputs can be adjusted in the long run. And long run will be LR. So what are examples here? Well, <clears throat> variable inputs are often things like raw materials. So we can order more raw materials or more ingredients. Could be something like certain kinds of labor, like hourly labor. You know, we either pay you more or less, depending on how much we schedule you. Could be some types of utilities. If we stay open more hours, uh, we're going to have a higher utility bill, something like that. Could be something like advertising. Fixed inputs often fall under the idea of capacity. So these are going to be issues of space, sort of literal capacity. So um, how many square feet of office space or manufacturing space do we have? Uh, big capital equipment. You know, how many pizza ovens do we have? How many bulldozers do we have? Often, managerial or skilled labor is more likely to be fixed in the short run, that it's harder to adjust the amount of capable managers or the amount of you know, nurses at the hospital we have in the long, in very quickly. We can't do it very quickly. Um, rather than it's a variable input. Because it takes time to find skilled or managerial workers and recruit them and get them up to speed and so on and so forth there. Exactly which inputs are fixed and variable, you know, very much depends upon the particular business. Likewise, how short is the short run and how long is the long run? Well, if a time span allows all inputs to be adjusted, then we're talking about the long run. If it's too short to allow all inputs to be adjusted, then we're talking about the short run. And how long the long run is and how short the short run is varies from industry to industry and business to business. If we're talking about a hot dog cart or a burrito truck, it may be that the short run is, you know, pretty short and the long run even may be pretty short. It may be that, you know, if you give me a month, I can go ahead and add another taco truck or sell my existing taco truck.
If we're talking about a semiconductor manufacturing plant, it could take years and years and years to build a new semiconductor manufacturing plant or nuclear power plant or something like that. So, you know, it's going to depend heavily upon the particular business, how long the long run is and how short the short run is. Let's talk about the short run production function. So the short run production function assumes a fixed amount of the fixed inputs because in the short run the amount of the fixed inputs that we have are fixed. So I'm going to think about in particular let's say we have a dairy farm and our fixed inputs say for instance are going to be how much land we have and the size, the number and size of our milking machines. And our variable inputs are going to be cows and feed for the cows. I mean, mostly they're going to eat grass, but maybe we feed them some other stuff as well. And maybe some types of labor. For now, I'm just going to worry about the quantity of cows that we have. And here's going to be our milk production. So this is our quantity of output, is another way of phrasing this. And this is our quantity of input. So the cows are our inputs. And if we add that first cow, it gets a lot of attention and it gets to eat whatever grass it wants and so on and so forth so that first cow is able to produce a lot we add that second cow and while the first cow allowed us to increase production from zero to four this second cow maybe only allows us to increase production from four to seven so what we would say here is that the marginal product of first cow is four units. The marginal product of second cow is three units because the second cow only added three units to our production. Maybe the third cow adds two and a half units and the fourth cow adds two units and the fifth cow adds one and a half units and so on and so forth. So we would get our production function is going like this. And we can imagine that it sort of keeps on going off like that. And what we see here is that we're having a case of decreasing marginal productivity. That is, the amount that each cow produces is lower than the previous cow because each cow gets less attention or has less great grass to eat with or something like that out there. And that's really common. This is also sometimes called diminishing returns. And that's a phrase you might even have heard even if you haven't taken an economics class. We're going to actually avoid that because there's two types of diminishing returns that are going to happen and we're going to keep want to keep them straight. Now, diminishing returns isn't the only case. So let me do a second example here. Suppose I am going to go ahead and have a coffee shack. So it's going to be one of those little kiosks or drive-through places where people can come and do their, get their coffee and drive away and so on and so forth out there. And one of the sort of rules of good hygiene in food service is that you should wash your hands after handling the money and before you handle the food again. So, thinking about the quantity of workers and the number of customers they can serve, so notice this is our quantity of output and this is our quantity of input. 
the relationship, of course, if we have zero workers, we don't serve any customers at all. If we have one worker, maybe they can serve 20 people an hour. If we add two workers, then one person can be full-time on the register all the time. The other person can be full-time uh, washing dishes and preparing food all the time. That means the person on the register doesn't have to waste a lot of time washing their hands after handling the money. So maybe we can more than double production because they work together as a team to be more effective than one single individual working twice. So maybe adding a second worker increases total pro productivity by more than 20. Suppose this shoots us up to 60. And if we add a third worker, well, this person can wash dishes and something, and let's suppose that causes productivity to go up to 90. A fourth worker, we're going to have productivity grow up to, say, 100 and we'll make it 115. Fifth worker, 130. Sixth worker, uh, 140. So if we're presented with data of this type, how do we think about the productivity of each worker? We can think about, at any point here, we can think about average productivity, or we can think about marginal productivity. So this would be AP versus MP. So average productivity is going to be equal to total quantity of output, sometimes also called total product, over the number of workers. Marginal productivity would be the change in the, num the amount of productivity over the change in the number of workers. So I don't have space up there, but marginal productivity equals change in the quantity of output or total product over the change in the input or number of workers. So that would be total product 2 minus total product 1 over input number two minus inputs number one. So what is the marginal, what is the average productivity when we have one worker? The average productivity when we have one worker is 20 units. We have 20 units of production divided by one worker gets us to 20. Average productivity when we have two workers is 30. 60 divided by 2. Average productivity when we have three workers is also 30. Average productivity when we have four workers is something pretty hard here, and I don't have a calculator, but I think it's about 20, maybe 27 and a half. Um, and you can certainly figure what that out. It's going to be 115 divided by uh, 4, and so on and so forth. So we can go ahead and keep on computing these average productivities. Again, marginal productivity is what's associated with the transition from 0 to 1. And as we go from 0 to 1, the change in total product is 20 minus 0, or 20, divided by the change in inputs. And in this case, every step is we're changing the level of inputs, the number of workers, by 1. So that's going to make it easy. Here, the transition is 40. Here, the transition is 30. Here, the transition is 25. And here, the transition is 15. And here, the transition is 10. So what we see in this case is that we have increasing returns or increasing marginal productivity at first. And then later, so in this region, we have increasing marginal productivity, and then 
sort of people start running out of useful tasks to do or they are what the hell is that okay sorry about that I think my laptop just decided it was running out of batteries for a second all right so down here we have decreasing marginal productivity and that's typically due to something like well people want to get access to some piece of equipment or something to um, do their work but someone else is already using it and they have to wait or something like that so what we're going to see here eventually and i'll do a fully fleshed out comprehensive numerical example using excel eventually is that when we have increasing marginal productivity that's going to be good for our cost structure and that sort of should be intuitive here right if each worker is more productive than the last then the average labor cost per unit is going to go down decreasing marginal productivity is bad for our costs because our labor cost per unit is going to go up and up and up and up because if each one of these people gets paid the same amount then the amount that they're contributing to the production relative to their labor costs is going down and down and down and down and down. And down.